yet another completely different filming location, a completely different angle position, completely different lighting, completely different sound. My apologies, this is because I'm travelling at the moment. And the item I'm going to be taking a look at here is Poundland's set of three remote control lights. Now, I say Poundland, in reality this costs five pounds this set, which is still good value because uh, they work really well. So we've got these three lights, and if you click the front of them, you can turn them on just by pressing the front, like a normal click switch. This one has no batteries in it. But if you remove, use the remote control, you've got a choice of on, off, uh, dim, which uh, you'll see the pulse of modulation here. It's actually quite fast. It's the camera shutter's very fast because I'm in full sunlight at the moment. And you also have the timer function. And if you press the timer function, they stay lit for 30 minutes and then go off. There's no multiple dimming settings. It's just dim high or off. So let's take a look at one. Well, I should mention that they come with a little holster for the remote control. Um, and each of these takes, let's see if I can get the back off this one, three AAA batteries. So let's open the receiver up and take a look at it first. It has Three screws holding it shut. I'm, I'm going to apologise if this goes out of focus around there because uh, I am kind of uh, working in full on sunlight here and it's swamping everything out. So the screws come out to reveal the circuit board with the button on it which seems to click against, I'm guessing it clicks against that little raised stud in the bottom of the battery pack. There's the infrared sensor. Rather oddly, it's actually detecting it through the plastic. We've got the, so there it comes, we've got the reflector mount here, and here is the circuit board. Okay. So what do we have here? Can I brighten this image up? Is it wise to brighten this image up? Yes, it is. So the circuit board appears to have the little ubiquitous 8-pin chip with a couple of decoupling capacitors here and here, a transistor, presumably for switching the LEDs, and the infrared sensor with what looks like a simple power supply around it. But I shall doodle this down. In fact, uh, I'll tell you what, let's uh, take apart the uh, remote controller first, and then I'll doodle it down. So this takes two AAA cells. Let's uh, get them out. Oop, if I can get them out. Okay, not so easy. Right, okay, let's just take it apart with the batteries in it then. Again, this is held together by three screws. I'm not expecting much in here. I'm expecting the buttons. Uh, are they click buttons? Yes, they are. Uh, I'm expecting the click buttons. Uh, the, another little eight pin chip, possibly. And the infrared emitter and a transistor to drive it. So there is the eight pin chip. There is the transistor. It doesn't look like there's any current limiting. Oh, wait, nope, nope. That looks like that could be the current limiting resistor. Uh, and then the four buttons, and that's more or less it. A little capacitor there for uh, decoupling the power supply across the chip. Okay, I'm going to pause and I'm going to reverse engineer all these circuits now. And I'll be back in a moment with the schematics. So that's uh, me reverse engineered this now. And it's a very simple circuit. The microcontroller, I guess it's a microcontroller, possibly a PIC-12, although other manufacturers tend to use the same pinout. Uh, it certainly has the same uh, pinout as the PIC-12, with uh, the positive uh, connection being pin 1, the negative connection being pin 8, and pin 4, which is often the programming pin on these microcontrollers, doesn't have the same pull-up, pull-down resistor uh, capability as the other microcontrollers, so it's often just tied to a fixed uh, level. And that's the same with the rec uh, receivers, they've got it tied negative, in this case it's tied positive. So we've got two uh, AAA cells creating a 3 volt rail, and we've got a decoupling capacitor, I'm guessing that's going to be 100 nanofarad, it's a really typical value for these. We've got the microcontroller, and then we've got one, two, three, four buttons, each just pulling one of the pin input pins down. Now someone was asking recently, what are pull-up, pull-down resistors? You can set in most microcontrollers a option to pull a pin up or down. Now, in this case, because these buttons are uh, switching down to the negative rail, 
you kind of want a slight bias up to the positive rail because if you just left them floating, then they'd possibly pick up electrical noise and you'd get false input. So when you actually select a weak pull-up, the positive rail inside the chip, it actually adds a very low value resistor to the input and it just keeps it pulled to the positive rail and then when you push the button, it pulls it to the negative rail and it just gives it a decisive uh, directional change, a logic change. When you push the button, the microcontroller, which is running an internal clock, uh, drives this transistor, which is a J3Y. They use a J3Y in the receivers too. It must be their favourite transistor. And then that illuminates this infrared LED via this 10-ohm resistor, which limits the current through it. And I have to say, the range of this is actually very good. It's really, really quite a good unit, especially when you consider that in these units, the infrared has to go through a plastic casing before it reaches the sensor. So that's the uh, receiver. Very textbook, you might say. And as is, uh, sure, sorry, that was the transmitter, and now comes the receiver, which is also quite textbook. The receiver is based on the same style of microcontroller, same sort of pinout arrangement. They've got three AAAs making a power rail of 4.5 volts. They've got the decoupling uh, capacitor mounted very close to the microcontroller. The reason for that is that it uh, avoids, if there's any sort of switching noise pulses on this rail, particularly when this is in pulsive modulation mode and this transistor is turning off and it creates a, a slight modulation uh, because the current through these tracks is pulsing with the current flowing through LEDs. By adding a little capacitor locally to the microcontroller, it decouples that. It provides a little reservoir locally uh, and makes the microcontroller more stable. That's just a really common thing. So again, uh, the manual on-off button has an internal. It's put into the zero-volt rail, so it's going to have that little uh, resistor inside, the virtual resistor, uh, pulling it up to make sure it's a stable state. The infrared receiver has its own little power supply as well. It's using two things to decouple. Instead of just using a capacitor next to it, it's also using a 100 ohm resistor. And what that means is that even with a, a fairly significant transient there, uh, the current would have to flow back through that resistor. So it adds a slight time delay and it just gives it a very smooth, steady supply. And I'm guessing this probably is a 100 nanofarad capacitor again. It's very hard to tell. I, I could measure them if I had a capacitance tester, which I don't. And also they're in circuit, which does tend to skew the results just a little bit. So the infrared receiver, that's this component here, which does everything. It does the... Uh, amp it receives it, amplifies it, and demodulates the pulses. It then sends logic, uh, it converts that to a simple logic level signal, which goes to the microcontroller, which gets decoded. And then when the microcontroller wants to turn on the LEDs, it switches directly this transistor. Normally, uh, in your own designs, you might have a little resistor. They're kind of being a bit naughty by doing that, suggesting that this uh, <coughs> does not have buffered outputs, this microcontroller. It looks like it's just got sim simple low current outputs, and they've uh, just driven the transistor directly to ensure it turns on. Uh, solidly. Uh, the same applies to the uh, the transmitter circuit which was using the same arrangement just up the microcontroller pin directly driving the transistor. If I was doing it with my PIC12 microcontrollers which do have a buffered output they can drive about 10 or 20 milliamps in output. I would put a resistor. In this case uh, they have a 5 ohm resistor and they've got 5 LEDs in parallel. You can see this sort of bus bar track around uh, that goes to all these LEDs and then the little resistors down here and there's a transistor there uh, and that just turns the LEDs on uh, by uh, when the transistor turns on the current flows through the LEDs through the resistor to limit the current and then down to the negative rail and that is fundamentally it it's very textbook now things are worthy of note I haven't measured the quiescent current of this I could measure the quiescent current of this if I can find the batteries um, but I have measured the quiescent current of the receiver, and it's approximately a quarter of a milliamp. Which is, it's not great, but it's not bad either. So let's uh, see if we can get the quiescent current, using my really super dinky little meter, of the transmitter in its standby state. By poking a lead, I'll poke a lead actually onto the back here. And then on to there. Quiescent current is actually quite high at 386 microamps. That's uh, about 0.4 of a milliamp. Let's uh, set that to the... That's higher than I was expecting. Or... Oh, no, 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 not getting much at all. 
Hold on. No, it's... Uh, oh, wait, no, that's right. That's right, I'm talking crap. Yeah, it is... Uh, about 387, 385 microamps. That seems uh, quite a high passive current because that's about uh, that's uh, about 0.3 of a milliamp. Uh, that's strange. I'm guessing it must just be the sort of running current and even in standby mode of the microcontroller. But um, other than that, you know, these things are these things are fine. They work really well. They've got a good range. They they're actually quite bright. It, it won't look bright because uh, obviously this is bright, dazzling sunlight. But at night time, they work quite well. And the functions they've got are nice and simple. They've got the simple on-off low level and they've got the timer. So that actually works really well. They're quite good.